Mona's Mirage might be the most complicated out of the four, but it is by far one of the most magnificent domains. This video is the last installment of this series where we discuss the development of Kazuha, Shinyan, Fisher, and Mona as individual characters and companions of each other. Also, how all this affected us as the players and the traveler. We end our journey with Mona. Destiny is a huge part of the Genshin world and almost every major character has talked about Destiny at some point. Everyone in Tevet has a constellation of their own and like fate, it is connected to them even after death. But there are those who can read their destiny and know about one's entire life story. Astrologists, the people who see everything yet are unable to change anything. And Mona is one of them. In a sense, being an astrologist in Tevet is a cruel fate. Seeing into the future of everyone around them but holding it in because they know fate and destiny are things that cannot be altered. In real life, astrologists just say some BS and tell you to go to a church or temple every day to avoid bad luck. They always use broad perspective to scam you. In Tevat, things are not so easy. There is no bad luck or good luck. Everything is laid out for you from the start. Mona's domain is shiny, reflective and vibrant. It reflects how her heart is. Polished by hardship from others until it is the glowing world we see today. It was not like that from the beginning though. She thinks the worst thing that happened to her was a teacher, Alice, scolding her. But deep down, she knows she does not regret her master's words. You must have thought Mona's domain was the hardest out of the three. As I said at the beginning of this video. Don't lie to yourself, I put a poll and it has the majority vote. The thing is, it was never as difficult as you think. A star follows you, guiding you where to go. Follow the star and you will reach the end of this story. It's true for even the regular puzzles. That star that guides you is destiny itself. Follow it and you will be safe. Deviate and you will be lost. Every person is given a perfect path to follow, but most deviate from it and try to find their own destiny, only to see that it was all faded. Like all the other characters, Monas also have a memory lane. Not just one, three. Each of them is quite simple. You just have to follow the star and you will reach the end. But each time the domain changes its layout, it shows you how Mona felt each and every time. The first time I enter one of these memory lanes, the path was straight ahead, with a few turns here and there, going straight up and up. As this was happening, Mona was just starting out as an astrologist. She is a genius. She is full of herself. But then people start to inquire about mortal things like missing people and love. It throws her world into chaos. It goes downhill from there. The star guides me one way, but the domain closes on itself as I advance. But fortunately, another part opens up. Muna was okay with it. She was honest and told them their exact fates. The domain elevates me up again. The people's hearts are fragile. They can't handle the truth. So they blame reality as a coping mechanism. This affects Mona negatively. She caves in and her world gets smaller and smaller until false hope. Then everything falls down. People blame reality and the work she is proud of herself. Words are like knives. Sometimes they can hurt more than physical cuts. She tries to judge most of them. but. It is close to impossible. The second time I enter Mona's memory lane, I was put straight into a starry void. She was ready to accept that some people will always reject reality. She grew. She convinced herself to be stronger, to convince others of her craft. Then she told the story of the adventurer. Even though this man knew his fate was sealed, he never tried to change it. He accepted that that is his fate. And carried on. This gave Mona hope. She was puzzled by something that should not exist. I was stuck in a maze that did not have walls. Always follow the stars. 
it will show the way. But as I exit the maze, it's again a flight of invisible stairs. Mona didn't know at the time, but she did mature after that soul crushing journey. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I guess. The last memory lane only opened up once I gave the pole two stars. It's like saying no one can move forward alone. Mona unintentionally got guidance from that adventurer who was not afraid of his destiny. Once I entered the third memory lane, the usual star that guided me was not there. They programmed my brain to have tunnel vision following the star the last two times. To be told, I was lost for a few seconds. Where should I go? Left or right? The domain didn't show this is the path you want to take. Everything was blocked off. Only when once I snapped out of that, I realized maybe a wall will move once I get closer. She says that she was lost during those times. That was what reflected in this domain. No guide, just move forward aimlessly. Then I found a star again. I clearly had a path straight ahead to a different room. But instead, I followed the star. This star was Alice's words. When I picked up the star, Mona said that Alice was correct. Following the star felt like I was programmed to follow my fate without taking a detour. Following that destiny opened up several unseen doors and Mona's world took complete 90 degree turns when the path ahead was there. Then the star guided me to a place with no flow. I hesitated at first, but I knew there would be some invisible path because I was following the star. I knew I had to jump because the star went down. But unlike the last time, I was given a choice to jump. Eventually, I figured out there was no point in staying, so I jumped. It was much scarier than the test of courage in Fischl's domain. I had no wing gliders. This was when I realized that we are subconsciously over-reliant of the wing glider. If one day they took it away, it would be devastating. What does seizing my destiny mean? What should I do? I do not see any hints. Too many stars to chase after. But all of them disappear when I get closer. Now I realize that it means you can observe them from afar, but you cannot touch them or alter them. The starry abyss that was not vibrant before is now shining. It's like a fever dream straight out of Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. For about one to two minutes straight, I was just looking for this destiny. Then I see one star cruising through the field and that's her destiny. An invisible light that shines brighter than a star. There was a transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. Every time I watch this cutscene, there's this feeling I can't put into words. It's not sadness, but it's not happiness either. Something much greater is in this out of all the four. There were two points where I felt like a chill running down my spine. The moment the violins hit and when the clock started ticking. The bird is Mona. No one sees her work as truth. Yet she keeps doing it for those few who accept reality and can see the star that is guiding them. She knows that is her destiny, to guide those who seek their destiny. But still, I can't shake this feeling that I am not getting something. Maybe you guys can tell me what that is in the comments. She was full of herself when she started out. But with time, she had learned her destiny on her own. And this is a piece of my madness. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Out of all the four mirages, I found Mona's domain the most enjoyable. I felt like things fit into place perfectly 
with a bit of underlying uncertainty. To be fair, I thought Mona's domain was way easier than Fischl's. See that one chest unfound? It's not in Mona's. If you found Mona's story fascinating, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated. If you missed the last three videos on the other three characters, check this playlist out. If you have, check this video out. This was Ekamin, as always. Thanks for watching. Now until next time, let your imaginations run wild.